Greetings everyone, and great here of another Cup Heroes 2 replay. As well on the left side as the blue Soviet, we have Ashraf Iji. Spawn as the yellow British force of TLKO. Spawn north side as the red Wehrmacht forces we have three motion tick on with capital zeros. They spawn as the magenta spearhead doctrine. We have damp I have no way to pronounce any of these words. <laughs> Either way, we do got, of course, MG42 opener over here. This person is just going straight to pair of uh, regular grenadiers. If section for the British player and for the Soviet, we do see penals. Pioneers heading towards the center of the map. Fuel sector being captured on up, or do we got this section moving around? Howdy! Penals engage in the pioneers. Pioneers do build some sandbags to hide behind, but of course they won't be able to do much versus the penals at long range or at close range. MG42 setting on up. Oh, I always still try to remember. My mind's still warped when it comes to like the previous version of this game, because I you remember the sandbags there. Sorry, off the side note. Pioneers do see a bit of damage here, which could allow the Grenadiers advance away forward. Grenadiers eyeing for some light cover here, engage with the intersections. Can you find some heavy cover now? Penal's rotating around. There's plenty of light cover behind these uh canoes. Uh, looks like the Soviet player goes for a sniper. The red Wehrmacht player is also eyeing for a sniper. The, mag the pink magenta players eyeing for just grenadiers. And we've got the these grenadiers straight forward. Dump Shneke. Shnick. Stream snail. Got it. <laughs> I was. Even if you uh, spell it out like that, I still have trouble pronouncing that old speech impediment from when I was growing up. I cannot move my tongue all too well. Deep sections fighting behind the light cover there, though. Actually, so this guy here is actually entirely out of range because see all those three models idle. So only two squads are fine the three man and the four man squad. And now I've got this four man Grenadier straight forward. Each section is going to be charging away forward with two Grenadiers here. And he's now finding a mix of light and open ground. Pinos come for a flank, trying to over on the sniper. Grenadiers need to focus down on that Pino. Pinos can get behind some heavy cover there. No battle phase one, which means no override for grenades. And this guy's behind an open ground. Good snipe shot there, but does find a uh, Soviet sniper in return. Wehrmacht sniper camouflage there. The Pino, the Soviet sniper just taking the shots, not lying for counter sniping. Pino squad does fall back. Does hold fire there. May have been spotted. Got the Grenadiers here. I think that's the Soviet sniper should escape on out there. Yeah. She only take a couple bullets. If few sections push away forward. So we got plenty of units here, including now two Wehrmacht snipers, one for each player. And the Wehrmacht sniper does take a shot there. Ooh, that sniper barely survives. The other sniper does get a good shot there. Got Grenadiers here as well. May want to go to the full heavy cover. Oh, there's a Saptor charge in a very cinematic position. Still heavy cover there. Grenadiers being in light cover there. Taking a bit of damage. Almost looks like there's two of them stacked there. There are two stacked right there. Sections do fall back, and they look like we'll skip on out of there. The P, the not P, sniper, Soviet sniper, gains some good hits on the pioneer. Enemy fire. We could see a counter snipe here. Yep. I wonder if he's not really interested in uh, cover. Do you think he's going to? A move friends everywhere. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. 
Render is taking some severe damage. Needs a fall back. Wait, that audio line. Uh, never mind. I thought I heard uh, an audio line that sounded like a Stug, but I may have been referring to the tele. The, uh. What's it called? Regal anti tank mines. But either way, we do have this squad falling back as well. Over here, we do got the pioneers. Another satchel charge there. Infrastructions charging the way forward. The British player is definitely blobbing everywhere. There's actually a chance that Grandier could get wiped out. This Grandier may just play a retreat back now. There's nothing much you can do against these guys. And I suppose it's always just to well, force back the Royal Engineers. But at this point in time, he's not going to hold this ground. He's actually prone to even be wiped even right now. He does get a good shot there with a sniper. Our headquarters has been improved. We can now build light mechanized infantry. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Uh, this Grandier needs reinforcements. Don't push it forward. I think that may be a mis- uh, oh, click. Pioneer's kept not captured that sector. It does cap the, the central sector. This guy's still pushing way forward. Oh, I'm busy pinking over here. Enol's pushing way forward with combat engineers, not flamethrower combat engineers. I don't think it's practice. I think it's more application. Either way, yeah. I really don't like the blobbing. I hate blobbers. I think everybody does. Do not have an AEC to put on the field. Let's see. No tier 2. We do have tier 2 here. No 2-2-2. Two -two -two. Does get behind heavy cover at least. He's taking time at least for that little bit of micro. Grandiers are on open ground, just more or less being a move forward. And falls back of all of them, I guess. Pioneers do fall back. I wonder if there's a teller mine in this region. I don't see a teller mine in this region. But he does have some Panzer Faust. Is something upgraded to LMG? He does have the conditions for a Panzer Faust. A single Panzer Faust. Try and charge for the Panzer Faust now. Oh, got a teller mine there. Very nice. Panzer Grandier is a negative round. That's not good. Just push forward to the heavy cover. MG42 sit down up there. These guys find some light cover, so the MG42 can get some good suppression. One of the penals was suppressed. Grenade or a bundle grenade. AC rotating around. Pioneers getting hit. So we place one for a T70. Hands grenades do fall back. Everything just falling back. And. Cover mine. Your orders are go to that teller mine. Ready to roll. Penal squad is on to capture that point. Sniper's moving around. And yep, I called it. A move, friends. Griner is fighting from heavy cover, but even then, it will get some good damage. Sniper is firing away. May see a squad wipe. Didn't want to take time for that shot and start falling back. Let's get wiped out there. Grandiers on back. Sniper does have more hits there. Scout car has arrived. Two to two being flown on the field. Questionable choice when seeing this both an AEC and a T70 in the field. But I guess it's, he really wants to hit these blobs. I can't really blame him. Take some damage there. Penals. Can he a little bit? I wonder if that T-70 has some friendly fire damage. One friendly killed. 
Take some shots there. Pack 40 and among other forces push me forward. Pino squad there. Granted, Grand has more or less had the A move uh, issue as well, like it, like the Brits, but at least he's not mass spamming out like that. At least microing those two uh, together. One goes to cover, one advances forward, that sort of thing. Machine gun crew awaiting orders. Vickers there. My machines do fall back. Do have a satchel charge on this? Oh, and that's also one reason why I don't really want to blob. You may find a landmine to force both squads back. It's not really a blob, but if you just a move it, where it's sort of like a blob style. It all depends how you move. If you're pushing forward or four squads in the area and you're taking time to micro every single one to put into different locations, cover, and advance forward, that's not a blob. A moving everywhere with at least around three units is definitely a blob. So honestly, if you're seeing move around two units, it's also sort of blobish, but not something blobbing. Either way, you've got these intersections moving around. Eno's moving around, fighting for some heavy cover, starting to take time to advance. There's a teller mine here. So we know there's at least a couple teller mines. One for each player. Gotta be careful. If this telemine explodes, it can wipe out both the penals. Rifle grenade fired. He actually probably could have threw the rifle grenade on top of the telemine. That would have wiped out everything. Telemines don't have the uh, limitation of only damaging two models per squad since they're meant to be anti vehicle. So they have really good collateral damage. Pioneers do push forward and get behind some heavy cover there. And t is just going to take some pot shots against the Pioneers. Act 40 sitting on up. Aim for 4 to away. Gets a good hit. Hands a 4 on the build queue. Very nice. Battle phase 2. No tier 4. He is going for a Zis. Not bad. Not going for this. The uh, next HQ up. Bit more manpower to do find way east AEC in range. Grandier is fighting on heavy and light cover in good positions. That truck exploded. I love physics engines. And sort of falling back there. You now have a mortar emplacement. He does have a mine superior. Looks like this landmine does get blown up, but it looks like it was maybe spotted there and takes time to destroy that one as well. Very, very good scouting detection by the Soviet player and very good cleaning up. If you can't uh, use an engineer, destroy it. And score now gains good hits there, forcing back those engineers. We've got now these. He's going to get some damage onto the tons of grenadiers. AC still can repair it on up. Squads kept at the various sectors. This one does fall back. Maybe we could have used some medical supplies to keep him on the front line. He has plenty of munitions for it, and doesn't have any munitions sink, so spam out medical supplies. Vickers hitting this grenadier. Glider commandos can be called into battle. Orders are ready to be issued for a raiding operation. Commander Down regiments now available. And I also should mention there's also Jaeger armor as well. Elephant can be very nice in 2v2, and this map is very good for the elephant. Assuming you can build out vehicles. If you don't build out vehicles, an elephant's not very good. As for straight forward, I don't see Soviet landmines region. He's sending rolls a miss, and the Pans 4 is trying to get some hits down the Zis. And trouble getting shots off, but does fall there. Point being decaptured by the rear by the Royal Engineers. And got the blob of infrastructures pushed way forward. Hmm. 
Magenta does have both of them have access to heavy, so it may see them both progress to battle phase three. Magenta's already progressed battle phase three. Maybe Panzer War for a Brumbar could be very useful, but he's on this side of the map. Red is also both the heavy Panzer Corps, and he does have enough fuel for a Brumbar, so a Brumbar or a Panzer War could be very useful for him. I'm more important towards a Brumbar. I have a bias towards it. Uh, I think they, Red does have an MG42, so to get suppressed, the problem is, we get this large of a blob, it has... They can even push through MGs in the front. Rifle grenade didn't do a whole lot of work there. Pants 4 firing away. I think the Pino actually may have bolted over that wall. Satchel charge there. Does fall back. East is able to get some good infantry damage being covered by the Zis gun. And now I'll try and go for a landmine there. They get spotted. Which I just trying to push the way for. Got a penal here. Plenty heavy cover behind that truck. He suddenly does take a shot there. Or receive a shot. So does the Panzer Force. Taking our territory. Does force back the Royal Engineers before we get the landmine deal down. And the modern placement is getting some good hits around the Grenadiers and the AEC's O Axel getting some good hits as well. Up here, you do now the Grenadiers falling back. Only well, light cover here thanks to that Satchel Charge. The Grenadiers do take a bit of damage. Burn Bar pushes way forward. The you know, squad does get suppressed. Great hit there. Look at that damage. He has to fall back to that blob. Not many kills, but look at all that damage. A couple more kills there. Very nice. No bunker buster. Coming. Grumbar shouted there. Ah, it must have been the uh, mortar flare. The mortar cover ability. This actually is a pretty rare ability. It's not a bad ability. Bring some white phosphorus mortar. And smoke mortars, as well as uh, mortar flares. Fire the shot there. Small hit there onto the AEC. Multiple six pounder shots there onto the. A little bit of lag spike there, but the drum bar does take quite a bit of damage. But the Grand Deers may display some of these uh, six pounders. There we go. One does get decrewed. Crew are, I'm afraid, quite dead. Ooh, got a good hit there. I think it was a nice uh, Panzer IV shot. No, that may have been rifle grenade. Bundle grenade. Looks like it was a bundle grenade. More is firing away. Taking time to destroy the pack or not pack 40s. Six pounder. Grenadier is taking some severe damage. So Soviet player says not selected the Doctrine, rebuilding a penal squad. The Soviet player has lost a sniper, while both the Verbach players have their snipers. Redusha, very nice. Oh, that's Panzer Warfare. That was pretty good. The Soviet player has a couple... Let's see what Doctrine player, the Soviet player can go for. So industry, the KV-2 can be decent on this map. IS-152 can be pretty good on this map. And IS-2 can be pretty good on this map. So all the heavy armor can be very useful on this map. It does have the increased Katusha range, as well as the SU-76 efficiency. And landmines just build faster, which is not bad. So interesting choice of bulletins. That's gonna hit there onto the Panzer IV, or the Schum Panzer IV. Rumbar doesn't need to fall back. Almost Special C1. If he gets Special C1, get the Bunker Buster. Panzer IV is trying to fall back as well, taking a bit too much abuse. 
into two, and of course covers a tree. Good, it's there. Let's push my forward. There's a force of vickers here to help fight the suppression and slow me a little down and starting to fall back. Oh, right rotation ball. Takes out the garrison, damages the six pounder. Cutoff one does get decaptured. Right now, if you look at the mini map, the access players do have a majority of the control and has a majority of the VPs as well. Sniper does fall back. Six pounder does get a good hit there, and there goes the AEC. As a the barrage gets some good hits as well. Very nice. The British blob are skin annihilated. The Soviet play. Oh. Ah, uh, lag spike. Let's give it a moment. Sometimes this happens in live games. Based on the fact that there's still quite a bit of progress bar, I think the game is continued. Try pausing it for a moment. As we're taking to try to let it buffer a little bit, maybe. Hmm. Well, as we know what the bridge player is doing wrong, he hasn't even gotten his tier next tech structure up yet. He's just been blobbing all the time. So he's nowhere near getting out of Firefly. At this point in time, they could use a Firefly. The Soviet player has done quite well with this game, but has been sustaining some pretty big losses. Maybe not go for Conscripts and I for Shock Troops. Yeah, even then, too much range firepower. That's not really a Shock Troop map. Can't fast forward. This may be just the end of the replay. Oh, either way, this ain't great scene. Thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.